Hi, this is the third YouTube video in the series talking about proportions and how to investigate them in SPSS, R Commander and R. This time we're looking at several independent samples or one sample with several categories and comparing that against a distribution. Um, this approach is also called a goodness of fit test, homogeneity test or a one-way classification test. More details you can find on my website. Let's look at some data. Here is some data taken from an article in Criminology in 1988 entitled Is there a season for homicide? So we have data from four periods of a year. Does our data support the theory that the homicide rate is not the same over all four seasons? So we're saying there's a constant homicide rate regardless of season. Let's look at more of the data. So if we're considering a uniform distribution that is regardless of season, the value is the same, we can actually work out what this value will be just by adding all the observed values together and then dividing by the number of categories we have. So we have 1,361 divided by 4 gives us expected value of 340 per season. So we can see in the winter we have less than the expected value by 12 homicides, but in the summer they go up higher than usual to plus 31. Sounds familiar this approach? Well it's all to do with residuals again. So we're talking about a signal which is our estimated parameter value from a population and then we have this possible noise we can consider which is our random variation um, due to sampling possibly from this uniform distribution. To find out if there is actually a difference or if it's just due to random sampling we consider the chi-square value, which is basically adding up all these observed minus expected frequencies, squaring them so we can get rid of the plus and minus signs, and dividing each by the expected frequency. And then we have simply um, a ratio of noise to signal. And obviously, as the noise gets larger, the chi-square value will get larger. And then we can say, well, perhaps there's something happening Perhaps it doesn't come from a uniform distribution if it's a very rare chance for it to do so. The actual chi-square value follows a chi-square probability density function, um, which we'd expect. But the trouble is it only does this if the expected cell count is more than 5. And there are other conditions as well. So if the expected cell count is less than 5, we can't use the chi-square distribution. What we can use is an exact value we'll find in the software. Let's begin by considering this data in SPSSS. Here we have our data. We first of all have a category variable and then the count variable. So let's go to variable view. The category variable, we have four values. One equals winter, two equals spring. 3 equals summer, 4 equals autumn. And we've defined it as a nominal variable. The count is just a scale numeric variable. And there are our values. Obviously the important thing is to make sure that we're weighted by our count variable. So we go to weight cases and we have weight cases, weight cases by frequency variable is the count variable. So in contrast to the analysis I've come out before, I'm going to this time draw the graphics first to give us some idea of what is going on. So it's graphics legacy dialogues bar, graphics legacy dialogues bar, simple bar chart, summaries for groups of cases, click define. Then the category axis is category. And we want the number of cases in each category which are four seasons of the year. Options. We've asked it to display error bars. We've asked for confidence intervals to be shown that particular type of error bar. And we're asking for 95% confidence intervals. Click continue. OK. There is our output with a confidence interval shown for each of our. Notice that 
They're all pretty much the same, except for summer, where we did notice it went high up. We had a high residual, remember. But, even so, the confidence intervals still overlap one another by at least 50%, I would say, suggesting that we're not going to get anywhere near a statistically significant result. To carry out the analysis, we go to Analyze, Non-parametric tests. Analyze non-parametric tests. Legacy dialogues. Chi-square. Analyze non-parametric tests. Legacy dialogues. Chi-square. We could also have chosen the one sample there, but that leads to the, the newfangled multiple dialogues. It's actually easier to do it this way. Chi-square. And we want the count variable as our test variable. And we're saying expected values, all categories are equal. We are using a uniform distribution. So all categories are equal. And then we're going to ask for an exact value. Interesting enough, you don't really know if you want the exact value or the equivalent Monte Carlo value if there's very large sample size until you've actually run the test and discovered that uh, one or two of the expected cells are less than five so it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation um, continue okay and here are our results residual is given out automatically and that's exactly the same as we worked out and there are the test results. Chi-square value, a 4. Visa freedom, 3. Asymptotic is the traditional value based upon the chi-square distribution, which is 0.258. And the exact significance value is also 0.258. Notice it also gives a little information down here. Zero cells have expected frequencies less than 5. So if we had a situation where it said that a certain number of cells were greater than five and they hadn't run an exact significance level or a Monte Carlo procedure, we would go back and do that again to get a more accurate p-value. Because it's so easy to carry out the analysis in R, I'm not going to bother with showing you how to do it in R commander this time. You simply use the command chi-square.test, that's C-H-I-S-Q dot test. Then you put in your four values using concatenate operator. No other options required. Press return. And here we are. It's assumed that we're considering a uniform distribution. There's a the p-value. There's a the chi-square value. We can do something cleverer if we save the results of the chi-square test to my result. So we say my result gets the results of the chi-square test. Type in my result. Same as before. But now we can say my result and ask for slightly more detail. So we're saying my result, and we want the expected data. There we are. Let's say my result observed. Or my result residuals. Which, as you expect, is the difference between the two. To find the confidence intervals for each of our proportions, we can use the prop test that we've used before. So it's prop.test, then we put in the two values, the two counts, and we're comparing these, remember, against the proportion 0.25, and the sequence level we want the confidence interval for is that 0.95. Press return, and there is a 95% confidence interval for that particular group. We obviously need to repeat that four times. Details in my PDF handout. I'd just like to mention quickly another example 
Um, a previous example we've just had the uniform distribution, but we can't actually um, consider any distribution. So here's an example about teen smoking for Ramsey's book 2005, um, introductory statistics using R, I've taken it from. He asked a group of children how often they smoked in the previous month, and he gauged it from one smoked every day to seven not at all. Um, the results is down below in the table, so we've got category one to seven, and you can see the count from the previous study. So we've got 32 um, in category one that smoked every day, compared to 105 that smoked never at all in the last month. Along with this, he collected portions from previous studies, I presume, and he wanted to compare his present studies data with that from previous studies. So it's, it's not a uniform distribution he's comparing against now, it's some set of portions that have come out of previous research. We show how we can do this incredibly easy in R. First of all, we define two vectors. First vector, the counts for each of our seven categories. And the second vector are the proportions that we're comparing against. Notice they have to be the same length. Then we just carry out the chi-square test using my data and the proportions we've specified. Notice that I'm not just saying chi-square dot test this time, I'm actually putting it into a variable my results because I wish to use my results and expose certain values that the chi-square test sends back. And there is a result. We see that we would get a result such as this, a set of data that varies this much, 24 times in 100 or even more extreme data. So it's above our probably critical value that we would set usually at 1 in 20, 0 0.05. So we accept that this is just random variation rather than any significantly difference in the samples. Let's look at some values that we've actually have back. So there are the observed values. We can also ask for expected values. We can ask for the residuals. Notice that the residuals are not the raw scores. The residuals are what's known as Pearson residuals, which is the observed values minus the expected values divided by the square root of the expected values. We can obviously obtain the residuals cells, which we'll do in a minute. First of all, I'd just like to draw a bar plot of these Pearson residuals. So we just use the word bar plot and then value we put in. Let's return, and there we are. So we can see, which we've actually seen straight away, was that the values don't really go above and below minus or plus 1.6, say, 7 rather. And we can see they will typically around. There's no real category that's sticking out. So let's see how we create a graph of the ordinary residuals as well. Just write a little expression. So we're saying that the observed values minus the expected values equal their ordinary residuals. Like that. And let's see what our ordinary residuals look like. There we are. And then we can just plot our residuals. And there are residuals. You can see how we can use this in lots of circumstances where possibly we don't have the raw data from a previous um, study, but we'd like to compare our results with it. A very useful technique. So this was the third YouTube video concerned with proportions. So out of our eight aspects, we've up to number four. We looked at the single proportion, we've looked at several independent proportions against an overall average, and now we've looked at the goodness of fit, or one-way classification. Um, approach. We looked at the murder data which had the uniform distribution we compared the data with and then we looked at the teen smokers and see how that was compared to a specified set of proportions. We used SPSSS and R 
We don't really bother with our command at this time because it was so easy to do directly in R. Now we move on to contingency tables.